God, we magnify you and praise yes, you Lord. for who you Have are. Have your way, not our way, but your be way. Be our God this day. Watch done. it over us. Take care of us. Help Lord. us, Lord, to be in your will, to do your will in everything that we yes, do, everything Father, that God. we say, Father. Open up the ears of those that need to hear, Lord, yes, in Lord. Jesus', Jesus holy Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Brian and Amy, coming to you today with uh, hopefully a talk that's not too long, but we're going to say what the Lord has placed on our hearts. Yes. And uh, I'm telling you, people, Jesus is coming back. Yes. It yes. is imminent. It's any time. Uh, you can tell by the comments in my videos that it's imminent, that mm -hmm. it's any time because of the scoffers that's out there. And the Bible says in the last day there's going to be scoffers. Right, but uh, but but also that by the people who are commenting that agree, they the Holy Spirit's telling yes. them as well that the Lord exactly. is coming. So we're agreeing together as yes. the body of Christ that the Lord is coming. We don't know the day or the hour, but despite scoffing and despite people who want to mock and and ridicule, it's okay. God bless you anyway. That's we're going to keep on doing what the Lord would have us do. That's it. You know, matter of fact, I answered one comment today that he said he even didn't have a desire to go to heaven. I mean, so what's sad. he doing? I mean, I know it's... I started to say, what is he doing on our channel, on looking at these type of channels? But I tell you what, maybe it's God pricking his heart, and one of these days, he'll get saved. Amen. But Amen. Uh, we're going home soon. Amen. If you want to go mid-trib or post-trib or whatever you believe, that's fine and dandy. The Bible says... Mm -hmm. He's coming after those that's watching for him. Right. If you're not watching, I mean, I can't say you can't go. You love the Lord or whatever. and you. Uh, but if you love the Lord, if you're in the Word, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you will know because he's telling you, I'm coming, get ready. Amen, amen. And today I'm going to be sharing out of Acts 5. And it's about the apostles. Um, they were imprisoned. And they were also, were also on trial. And it was the church people, the church leaders, yes. that were coming against them. So the first uh, two verses I'm going to read out of Acts 5 is 19 and 20. And it says, But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, you, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Yes. So it was God who sent the messenger, the angel, to tell the disciples to go and preach the word of God. And it goes on, I'm, I'm going through the chapter without reading it all to make this a shorter, shorter version, but in um, verse 25 it says, So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Yes. They were telling on them. They were uh, saying, Hey, they're out there preaching. They're, they're talking about Jesus. And... Down in verses 27 and 28, it says, And when they had brought them, they oh, set them Jesus. before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? Yes. And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Yes. That is so powerful. And the last two verses I have are 29 and 32. And it says, But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the, the, this is the last verse in Acts 5. It's 32. It says, And we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Yes. So, um, yes, I picked out those specific verses that God pointed out to me. You know, and, and it's good if you can read chapter 5, the book of Acts. Yes. And read the whole, um, the whole uh, account of what happened. But what it summed up to be is they were pleading and stating and preaching the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Yes. And these church leaders were angry because that was putting the blood on them. That was showing that Jesus died for all and he set us free for forgiveness of our sins when we repent and come to him. 
Jesus took that power. It's his power. Yes. It's not the church power. We are the body of Christ. But back then, the religious leaders like they are today want to control people. They want finances. They want things from uh, the congregation. But Jesus wants us. Yes. And I'm not against churches. I'm for churches because we're part of the church and you're part of the church. But what I'm saying is keep preaching the word of God, even if it makes people mad, even if they come against you, because there will be a day when they will put you in prison. You know, when the scoffers that come against you, if you have a YouTube channel, uh, you know, you have a Facebook uh, ministry page, if scoffers are coming against you and they're going against what you're preaching, what God has given you out of the Word, it's best not to even listen to them. It's best not to even read it if you can't handle it. It's best to just let it go. I know I try to answer everyone that comments but it's hard once you get several thousand. But I try to answer. I try to go back and look. Mm -hmm. But for it to come against you so hard that it starts to bother you, right. don't let it bother you. Because we just read right here that, you know, they went and told on them and said, hey, mm -hmm. they're out here preaching when right. you told them not to. Right. And, you know... I'm sitting here looking at Matthew 24, verse 37. It says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. They mocked Noah. Right. They ridiculed him. Right. Here's Noah building a big boat out in the middle of nowhere. There's no water around. There's not a river. There's no way to get it to the ocean. I mean, imagine. I, when I lived over in Athens, Greece, there was uh, some woods across the road from me. And I heard some noise in the woods, some hammering and things. And I thought, well, somebody's building something. So I went up and down a little path through the woods. And there was a man back there building a big uh, fishing boat. <laughs> and uh, that's what he does. He builds mm -hmm. fishing boats. And uh, I was able, through an interpreter, to be able to uh, get some of the basic things out of him. But, uh, yeah, they're going to haul that to the ocean and put it in. But it's not as big as what Noah had. Noah's building this huge ark. And I'm sure the scoffers in his day, the people that come and ridiculed him and says, you know, you shouldn't be preaching. Right. You shouldn't be out here saying these things. You need to quit what you're doing. Do you think Noah quit? No, he didn't. Do you think he wanted to quit? Mm, the, the thoughts may have entered his mind, but no, he heard from the Lord. Yes. He knew what God had told him to do. And that's us. When right. we go out to preach, it's hard for me to preach on the streets. It is. I've been preaching 48 years. It's easy behind the pulpit. It's easy in the mission fields to uh, go into places that they're expecting you. Mm -hmm. But to go down here to the courthouse and just stand there and proclaim the day of the Lord, that Jesus is coming, yes. judgment's coming to America, judgment's yes. coming to your city, Get ready now. Right. It's best to find God now while he can be found. Yes, there's scoffers out there. Right. There's people that walk past you and just look at you like you're crazy. Yep. But I tell you what. Keep preaching. That's it. You got you to gotta keep on. Right. And this is the last verse that I have. Um, and this is an encouragement to you. Uh, it doesn't matter. So if people want to keep coming against us um, for preaching the gospel... And trying to pick us apart, that's fine. You know, for those that that encourage us, God yes. bless you, and we encourage yes. you as well. Amen. But even to the people that are scoffers or people that um, want to disagree, you know, I pray God blesses you and the Holy Spirit open your eyes to His Word, not to our Word, but His Word. That's it. Um, so this is in Matthew five verses eleven and twelve. It says, "Blessed are you when they revile and persecute yes. you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely." For my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before Amen. you. So, you know, the whole section of the Beatitudes, it's not talking about one specific type of person. It's the kind of person who will inherit the kingdom of heaven. You know, uh, if you feel um, like people are just pointing out error in you all the time, Keep preaching, keep That's witnessing. It. 
because the enemy is going Amen. to put people out there to do that. This It's a spiritual battle that we're in. We have to put yes. on the armor of God every day, which I do, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the belt breastplate of righteousness what i put on my feet to prepare the good news of peace which peace which is the That's gospel it. my shield is my faith and the sword is god's word yes and my life verse is he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world That's it. and that verse is for you as well for every believer and just like i said blessed are you just keep preaching the gospel keep pleading the blood of jesus because yes. it convicts people and if they feel guilty it's because they know that they have sinned. Just yes. like I have sinned, my husband sinned, and we've repented, and there's a way to turn things around. I walked into the grocery store yesterday just to buy some uh, hoagie buns, and uh, when I was finished checking out and started walking out the door, before I was even out of the store, God said, tell them I'm coming. And I just kept walking. Amen. I just thought, well, yeah, I need to come back down here someday and stand out here on the sidewalk and until they run me off or whatever and uh, just tell them that you're coming. And God said, no, tell them now. And it's like, I'll be back down here. I'll, I'll come back. I didn't make it 30 or 40 feet out into the parking lot when God said, tell them I'm coming yes. because I'm coming and you're not saying a word. Right. I turned around and I walked back in the store. I, when the doors opened, I stepped inside and I said, Oh, by the way, Jesus is coming. Amen. A couple of them looked at me like I was crazy, but I don't care. Right. I'm going to stand before our Lord God Almighty here very, very shortly. And he's going to say, you know, why didn't you mention it to this one or to that one? Right. I wish you would have. Right. Amen. And, uh. Well, and this morning I was paying some bills over the phone, and I told the lady, you know, um, you know, I want to pay my bills, and because the <laughs> Lord's coming soon, and yes. I, I don't want to have debt to people, and so we, you know, that's what we were doing. But she, I think it lifted her up. She said, "Amen." She said, "I believe He's coming yes. soon." You know, whether it's a word to tell people and warn people to get right with God, or to encourage those who believe in the Lord, we can agree in the Holy Spirit that the Lord. His return is imminent. That's it. So we're looking for him. We're watching and praying, and we want to keep witnessing. We want to keep sharing yes. what Jesus' blood did. And at least like in the, the book of Acts, in chapter 5, the disciples, no matter what they faced, imprisonment, trial, you know, ridicule, they kept preaching. That's it. So if you have any bills you need paid, send them to Amy <laughs> at P.O. Box. No. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> You know, he's coming soon. Yes, amen. And we need to be diligent with what we are doing and how we are acting and our preaching. Keep on preaching. You know, if you don't know the Lord, just say this simple prayer with Amy. You know, we're, we're going to go to prayer here, but then she's going to pray a simple prayer. Yes. And just repeat it after her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this video. Yes, Lord, thank, thank you, God, you that the word will go out. out there. That, God, that you'll thank give you, God, strength to those that you have called thank into the ministry. Those that you have called to do these things. You've called us all. Yes, but, God, Lord. only a few of us are going to be bold enough to stand in the marketplaces, to stand in these places that, God, you have set these watchmen and watchwomen out here, God, to yes. do the work. Yes, Lord. But God, if there's anybody under the sound of our voice that don't know you, Father, I pray that they'll pray this simple prayer with us. Yes. Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and live in me. Come into my heart and live in me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my soul. Yes, Lord. Thank you, In God. Jesus' name. Jesus Hallelujah. Name. Amen. Such a simple prayer, but a powerful prayer. Right. And, and if you've said that prayer, find a church and get baptized. Yes. You know, it's important to confess that to others and start witnessing. Yes. Because that's what we're called to do. When we get saved, we're supposed to witness. <coughs> and read the Bible. Yes. The Bible. You have to read that. <coughs> Excuse me. Got choked. But the Bible will give you faith. It will give you strength. Right. Um, right. And it's um, in John 1 and 1, it says Jesus is the Word. So you're abiding in Christ when you read God's Word. 
Because Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen.